me another video today. Today I wanted to talk about solar and how you can run your car from power provided by the sun. A gasoline car can only run off one type of fuel, and while you can mix a bit of ethanol, you're still mostly driving on gas. In comparison, electric vehicles can receive energy from a mix of different sources. However, renewable energy can be provided by solar, wind, and hydro. Electric cars are not the only vehicles that run off electricity. This is the light rail that runs through Phoenix and is also an electric vehicle. Our energy grid isn't just made up of a single source of power, but is actually a mix of everything in your region. You can go on your utilities website if you'd like to see what kind of mix you have. If you'd like an easy way to clean up your personal energy mix, adding solar is always a great option. There are a few parts of a solar generation system that are pretty important. The panels themselves, the inverters, and the grid. Here I am underneath the APS solar pavilion. Take, take a look at all of these solar panels. Without going into too much detail, solar panels collect energy from the sun. There are a few different technologies of solar on the market right now, like monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and thin film. Each one has its own advantages, but monocrystalline and polycrystalline are the most common for rooftop solar. Thin film does exist on rooftop systems, but it has a higher cost because it's made of a flexible material. Solar cell technology has been advancing quickly over the past few years. Most panels now are at least 20% efficient with some going above 30. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually a pretty big deal. Next up is the inverters. These are the boxes that get installed on your wall after the solar is installed. They're responsible for converting the DC power that you get from the solar panels to AC power, which is usable by electronics in your house. There's a slight misconception that the solar inverters will keep your power running while there's a power outage. While this would be really cool, it's unfortunately not true. The solar inverters cut energy production in the event of a blackout. This ensures that, they, that the power lines don't stay energized in the event of downed wires or other scenarios. If you have a battery backup system during a power outage, your system can isolate the house in a mini-grid and can be completely self-sufficient. Battery backup systems are pretty neat, but that's a topic for another video. Back to the inverters. They convert the power from DC to AC, then push power generated by the panels to the grid. If you want to know how solar panels work in detail, I would suggest some research. I've seen a lot of great educational videos on how it works. I can link some in the description below. Now, what about the grid? Your house is connected to the grid and the power generated by the system will flow to its area of least resistance or the closest place of need. Since it's attached to your house, you're the closest. Any power you generate will go directly to your house, so as long as you're immediately trying to use it. If the sun is shining bright and you've got the AC running, have a load of laundry in, or you're using an electric oven, you'll probably be taking all the power your system can generate at the time. But what if you're not at home? That power then goes out to the grid for your neighbors to be able to use. The power is never lost or wasted. This power is then credited to you on your electric bill, depending on your contract with your utility company. This will either be paid back to you or become an energy credit that you can get back at a later time. It's kind of like using the grid as your own personal battery pack. This house has 9.75 kilowatts of solar, and the best day this year, the panels collected 60.5 kilowatt hours. To put that in perspective, in a long-range Tesla Model 3, that would get you about 252 miles of range purely off the sun. Looking at this graph, the panels start collecting energy at around 5.30 a.m. and reach their peak at noon, then continues to generate until 7.45 p.m. The graph shows it peaks at 7 kilowatts, but the system is built for 9.75 kilowatts. The reason for this is because I have solar on two sides of the house. While I have 9.75 kilowatts worth of panels, not every panel is getting shined on at the same time. Now that we've gone over how a solar generation system works, and you're clearly invested if you've gotten this far into the video, how do I charge my car off the sun? So long as the sun is shining, you can charge using solar. 
Now if you're looking to charge 100% off the sun, it gets a little bit more complex. Solar is a constantly moving source of energy. It can go up or down when a cloud goes overhead and its production changes with the seasons. It's very possible that your car may even be capable of drawing more power than your solar can provide. There are EV chargers that are able to connect up to your solar system and will limit the power draw your car can pull. This can make it so that any excess power that your system produces goes straight to your car, rather than going out to the grid. A battery backup system can also make that a bit easier as the batteries can fill the gaps where the solar system is lacking. Here in Arizona, we get a lot of sun. Sunshine in the Phoenix area averages 86% of possible, ranging from a minimum monthly average around 78% in January and December to a maximum of 94% in June. Solar panels are not just for houses, but they can also be used over parking lots and even on cars. In parking lots, they serve as a dual purpose. They provide energy to the building and create shade for the cars parked underneath. Even a gasoline car will benefit since it will not have to run the air conditioner as much when the owner returns to the car. In walkways like the one I am standing under, provide a lot of relief from the extreme heat of Phoenix. Solar panels can also be put on cars. However, right now it is still being researched and developed. Solar panels have not yet been successful enough to power a production vehicle. Some cars have a solar rooftop that is used to assist some of the small functions of the car, like the air conditioner and the radio. There is a company called Lightyear that is working on a solar-powered car called Lightyear One. The roof and hood of the car comprise of five square meters of solar cells within the safety glass. It has a range of 725 kilometers, it uses 83 watt hours per kilometer without air conditioning, and it gets 12 miles per hour charging off solar. It can also charge like any other electric vehicle. It is a great concept if it works, so we will see. Solar is an amazing source of power that is getting better every day, and it is a renewable source. One more tip for you. If you want to source your power from renewables but can't get solar in your house or live in an apartment, Check with your utility company. There are some plans which force a utility to offset all of your power with renewable sources. Well, that's all for now. What's your favorite type of renewable energy? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more EV content. Follow me on social media at Kaya's EV and Kaya's Tesla. I also have a website. It's kayazev.com. It's still a work in progress, but I'm pretty excited for it. Thanks for spending time with me today and happy charging.